Got some exam questions here for the electrode potentials topic. So the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So if you want to click on that, download the questions, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. Okay, so question one, we've got to outline the setup that you could use in the lab to measure the standard electrode potential for the cell made from redox systems four and five. I'll just highlight those. So in the answer, we've got to include details of apparatus, solution, standard conditions required for the measurement of the standard potential. Okay, so I'll draw this sort of while you're watching rather than just put it on the screen. So we're going to need essentially two beakers and there's going to be solutions in both of those. They're going to be connected by the salt bridge. And the important thing there is to make sure that the salt bridge goes into the solutions. Okay, so in the left-hand beaker, I'm going to put the uh, system force, or the silver-silver plus ions. So because it's solid silver, we need a block of silver going into the solution. So that's going to be AG solid. And this solution is going to be a 1 mole per decimeter cubed solution of AG plus aqueous ions. And in the right hand beaker, we're going to have, you can see for system five, it's Fe3 plus aqueous and Fe2 plus aqueous. So both of those ions need to be in that solution. So that's Fe2 plus Aq and Fe3 plus Aq. And they're both at one mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, so to connect the circuit then, what we need in here is a platinum electrode. So platinum solid. And then we literally just need to connect these with a high resistance voltmeter. There you go, and that's the diagram that you would need to draw. So what the examiner's looking for, where those four marks are gonna be scored is the complete circuit, which we've got there, so the examiner's looking for the salt bridge, the voltmeter, the wires. Um, the correct silver, silver plus half cell. The correct iron 2 plus iron 3 plus half cell. And then we're just going to list the standard conditions because it is mentioned in the question. So we need one mole per decimeter cubed. Uh, solutions, which I've already put on the labels, but I'll write it up here. The temperatures are 298 Kelvin, or you could say 25 degrees C. And we need a pressure of 100 kilopascals. Part 2 now, electrochemical cell based on systems 2 and 4. It's got a standard potential of plus 0.53 volts. Stating explain the effect on the cell potential, so on this voltage here. Um, if the concentration of silver ions is increased. So we'll have a look at the table. I've already highlighted the relevant information. So systems two and four, if we look at the electrode potentials as they are, so it's plus 1.33 for system two and 0 0.80, plus 0 0.80 for system four. So what that means is this half equation will move in the forwards direction, so left to right. This one will be forced therefore in reverse. So if you increase the concentration of the silver ions, what that's going to do is it's going to force the equilibrium more to the right, just from Le Chatelier's principle. And so it's going to increase this value, this voltage here. It's going to make this more positive. So therefore, when you combine the two electrode potentials, remember the cell potential is the most positive one minus the least positive one. If this is getting more positive, the difference is going to reduce. So the, the cell potential is going to decrease, become less positive. So in words, something like this would do. So the silver plus silver half cell moves to the right. Its electro potential becomes more positive. Therefore, the cell potential would get smaller. So part B now, from the table, predict the oxidizing agent or agents that won't be able to oxidize iron 2 plus up to iron 3 plus. So looking at the table, 
oxidation of iron 2 plus to 3 plus is the half equation going backwards. Okay, so all of these systems can make that happen because their electrode potential is greater, more positive than 0 0.77. So, for example, if you combine that one with that one, okay, that's more positive. So that goes in that direction, meaning that will go in that direction. So the ones that can't do that are these two here. So if you combine that with that, that's going to go in the forwards direction. So Fe3 plus would go to 2 plus, it would be reduced. And this one would go in reverse, okay? So the oxidizing agent in these two half equations, remember, oxidizing agents are electron acceptors. So these are the oxidizing agents. So the oxidizing agent in these types of half equations are on the left-hand side. So the answer is Zn2 plus aqueous and Ce3 plus aqueous. Okay, so the final part. Aqueous solution of iron 2 bromide is mixed with an excess of acidified uh, manganate 7 ions. Using the table, give the formulae of the products for any reactions that take place. We're not asked to explain this, but I'll sort of give you an explanation when I go through the answers. So we'll look at the table. You see I've highlighted the systems at play here. So obviously system 1 is the acidified manganate 7 ions. And we've got iron 2 bromide. So we've got Fe2 plus ions kicking about. And we've also got bromide ions as well. So if we look at the electrode potentials, how they compare with each other. So this one's the most positive, so that means this system will move in the forwards direction and both of these are going to be forced to move in reverse. So the products we're going to get are Mn2 plus and water. We're going to get bromine and we're going to get Fe3 plus ions. Okay, so you just have to list the products like I've done there and the way the mark scheme worked for this was if you got all four of them you got two marks. If you got three of them, you got one mark. Unfortunately, if you get less than three, you wouldn't get any marks at all. Number two, multiple choice. So we've got this um, standard cell set up between these two half cells. We've got the electrode potentials, which reaction takes place at the negative electrode of the cell. So the negative electrode is the one that's the least positive. So it's this one here and the least positive one goes in reverse. So that's the direction of that one. So obviously we have the reaction of half a mole of hydrogen going to H plus ions and an electron. So it was option B. Number three, another multiple choice question. So we've got those two electrode potentials. Um, which statement is correct for the standard cell? So if we just look at what's going to happen with those two half cells, We've got the most positive um, electrode potential is this one here. So that's actually going to move in the forwards direction. That's going to be moving in the reverse direction. So what's happening here? Uh, tin 2 plus is reduced to tin. Aluminium is oxidized to Al3 plus. So sort of A and C look like they could be correct. The cell potential, so E cell, is going to be the most positive minus the least positive. So that's minus 0 0.137 minus minus 1.676. If you work that out, you get 1.539 volts. And so therefore, A is correct. Okay, so question four now. We've got to use all that information to show how acidic and alkaline hydrogen field cells give the same overall cell equation and cell potential despite there being different reactions at each electrode. So you can see I've numbered the four half cells one to four. So the acidic one will do first. So that's based on systems two and four. Okay, so system two and system four. Okay, because that's got the H plus ions in it. So if we look at the cell potentials, the half cell potentials, there they are there. So the most positive one will travel in the forwards direction. The least positive one is forced to go in reverse. So 
what I'm going to do is just write up the electrode reaction. So the reaction at the positive electrode is the forward reaction for 4, so O2 plus 4H plus plus 4E minus goes to 2H2O. And the negative electrode reaction would be the reverse of 2, so H2 going to 2H plus and 2 electrons. The overall reaction, so when we add them together, so we're going to need to double this one so the electrons drop out. We end up with 2 moles of hydrogen plus a mole of oxygen going to 2 moles of water. And the E cell, most positive minus least, is 1.23 volts. So moving on to the alkaline half cells, obviously they're the ones with the hydroxide ions in. So we've got systems 1 and 3 now. So again, look at the standard electrode potentials. The most positive one moves in the forwards direction. So that's that one there. That's going to go in reverse. And I'm basically just going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to write the positive and negative electrode reactions, the overall reaction, and the E cell. Okay, so there they are there. So the positive half cell reaction, system 3 going forwards. Negative, system 1 going in reverse. So that's that one there. And then we need to obviously double this one to get the electrons up to 4. So you'd have 4 OH minuses, 2 H2s, 4 H2Os. And then when you combine those two, you end up with that overall equation, which is identical to that one. And when you do the E cell, the voltage of the cell, most positive, minus least, so 0 0.4 minus minus 0 0.83, you get the same voltage. So the way the marks were working for those, if you wrote both of those correctly, you got a mark. If you worked out the E cell, showed the E cell was 1.23 volts, you got that one. Likewise, that mark and that one. So that's where those four marks came from. Okay, question five. It's another one where I've got to draw the label diagram. So this time we've got to show how the standard electrode potential of the SN4 plus SN2 plus redux system could be measured. So the one I've highlighted basically. So for standard electrode potential, it's against the standard hydrogen electrode, SHE for short, standard hydrogen electrode. So I'll draw that and show you all the key things. So again, we need two beakers and we need solutions in each of the beakers. So I'll put the um, tin 4 plus 2 plus in this one. So SN4 plus AQ and SN2 plus AQ and we need a platinum electrode so platinum solid obviously we need a salt bridge connecting those solutions remember it's got to be in the solution so salt bridge so that will do for that and then this one here this is the standard hydrogen electrode this one here so the solution is, oh, I forgot to write one mole per decimeter cubed concentration for both of those solutions. So here we need one mole per decimeter cubed, H plus, aqueous, and the hydrogen is fed in through a contraption that looks a bit like an upside down test tube with sort of a little side arm. So if I just show you that something like that and then you've got a piece of wire running down the middle and you've got a little platinum electrode there the hydrogen gas is fed in and then you just connect that up with a high resistance voltmeter and that'll do there okay so because it's mentioned standard electrode potential, I'd get in the standard conditions. So I've already said one mole per decimeter cubed of um, solutions. I'd also just put somewhere the temperature, 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees C, and also at 100 kilopascals. So the next part from table 4.1, write equations for the reactions that are feasible. 
and then at the end suggest two reasons why these may not actually take place. So I've numbered them one through to three. So if we just look at the first two, so the feasible reaction between those two is going to be this one forwards because of that more positive voltage than that. So that forwards, that in reverse. And just take a look at the electrons to look at what you're going to need to do. Okay, so there's only one electron in that one, but there's three there. So we'll treble this, combine it with that. Okay, so that's the first one. If we look at systems one and three now, so that's still more positive. So that in f the forwards direction, that in the reverse direction. Look at the electrons. So we're going to need to double that one and combine it with that. So the final combination is going to be between two and three. So again, looking at the electropotentials for the half cells, we've now got this one more positive than that one. So that's going to go in the forwards direction. That's going to go in reverse. Look at the electrons. So we've got three and two. So if we treble this one and add it to double that one, and that will give us the overall equation. Okay, so that's that there. And then two reasons why the reactions mightn't actually take place. So you could say non-standard conditions. You could say the activation energy was too damn high. No, just too high. Another one you could have given is something like the rate's too slow. And the final question suggests one advantage of using methanol rather than hydrogen in a fuel cell for vehicles. The one I've gone for is the fact that methanol is a liquid, so it's easier to handle or easier to store in the vehicle. Hydrogen's a gas, and so you've got to store it under very, very high pressure in a sort of very, very thick walled tank. So methanol's a lot easier to handle or store.